you know what? Hi, everyone, and welcome to Inventor's Launchpad Roadmap to Success. I am Carmine Disco, your host. And today on the Launchpad, we have a, a special guest, uh, someone who has been in the as seen on TV industry uh, for over 20 years. And uh, he's seen so many products run things through knows what works, knows what doesn't. He uses some special softwares. He uses people. He uses focus groups, I'm sure, to see what is going to work. His name is Bob Greenstone, and he is the CEO of As Seen on TV Wholesale. And I have him on the line. Hey, Bob, you over there? I sure am. Good to see you. Hey, Bob. Thanks for being on the show today. And I appreciate uh, you giving us some time, uh, you know, we hear all the time about as seen on TV and products. We see them on television. I see them myself. And, you know, I'm sure when you're watching TV, you see them. And a lot of people aren't sure what it takes uh, to really get a product on TV. And uh, you're one of those guys that's been doing it for a long time. And before we get into that, give us a little bit of your background and, and kind of how you got into this industry. The, uh, <clears throat> I, I got into the industry a little bit through the back door. The, a lot of people in the industry were kind of, there was a small cluster of people in, in different parts of the, the country, in New Jersey, in the, in the upper Midwest, in LA. Uh, I got into it through uh, a local channel. I was running uh, a lot of advertising, local market advertising in San Diego for local retailers. And my, uh, my rep came to me one day and he said, you know, they've just put me in charge of 30 minute time on, on TV and I'd never heard of that before. It was uh, very early 1990s, and uh, I said, I don't know, what, what does that have to do with me? He said, well, I can get you 30 minutes to reach 450,000 or 500,000 people for $15 on Channel 4, <laughs> prime time. Wow. I went, you know, that, that does sound interesting to me. He said, the only thing is you have to create content for it. So uh, we set about starting to create content for the same local retailers that were selling carpeting and cars, there were malls, plastic surgeons. And uh, we started making these, these uh, commercials. We'd make a 10 minute commercial and then loop them three times in the 30 minutes. And they work so much better than anything else that was out there. People were still channel surfing with their, their channel flippers, not like today where it's all digital and, and the menus and stuff. And uh, also the, none of the stations were digital. So there was a lot of, a lot of airtime available. And we started doing this. It was extremely successful. And more and more people started to approach us to do it. In fact, there was a fellow from uh, New Jersey, a guy named Ron Garaya, a good friend of mine, who was a hypnotist. And he was putting on seminars around the country, lose weight with hypnosis. Uh, and he was advertising in the newspaper. And he had guys running around the country giving these seminars at local hotels. And he was in San Diego, saw one of our things. And he, he said, uh, you know, you think you can make one of those commercials for me? Um, I said, yeah, sure. He, he said, uh, <clears throat> the only thing is you, you got to buy the time for me all around the country, not just San Diego. And I said, sure, no problem. I didn't know what was involved at that point. But back in when we did this 1993 or so, there were 11,000 cable systems in the U.S. I mean, there were cable systems that had 10 people in them. <laughs> um, so, so uh, and we didn't know which ones. There were some bigger ones, like even L.A. had 30 cable systems. Um, so it was, it was phenomenal, but we, we got this book, it was about the size of a, a small phone book and it had the list of all the cable systems, how many subscribers, what channels and stuff like that. And, uh, we started contact them and built up a database of who would accept this 30 minute time, uh, advertising and literally built, built a whole business over that, which, which was thriving till the late nineties, buying airtime and, and doing commercials and then buying time for other people like for Ron Popeil. Carlton Sheets, Don LaPree, if anyone remembers him. A lot of these guys are in jail or have been in jail since then. But, but the, the, uh, we became a leader in that space. And a lot of people were giving us their commercials to run on a, on a, like a CPA basis. We'd run the commercial and we'd all get paid depending on the number of orders. But as everything digitized towards the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, all those, if you if you're old enough to flip, remember flipping through the TV and seeing blue screens, um, that doesn't exist anymore. But back then, um, there were all you could flip through the channels, there'd be blue screens. But all that's gone now, and we ended up uh, in the uh, in the process of doing that. We became very expert at running websites as well. So we started running websites for the shows that we were doing, and eventually, 
were able to accumulate um, a vast amount of experience and data related to um, what was going on in the marketplace and the types of people responding to commercials and stuff. So that was, that was how we, uh, wow. the genesis of how we got into it. I mean, you kind of created, created that industry. I mean, and, and being able to coordinate putting your commercials on that many stations, that must have taken a lot of work. It was a lot of work. I mean, if we created anything, it was that kind of unbound network of local cable systems. Uh, certainly, there was the people that are far, were far further along than, than we were. Though the, the industry itself gen was all TV. Everything that was sold was sold on the TV as people saw, and they call the 800 number or they'd send in um, a check to the, to the mail order address. But there was really very little or no retail content. Um, for it. today, the industry is entirely different where at least for the short form, what we call short form of the two minute commercials you see like on Fox news or, or on M MSNBC or CNN trying to be political, correct, political yeah. correct, the, the, <laughs> or whatever you like to watch the, the, um, those are really geared towards, uh, a, a bigger program, which ultimately results in the product getting into the big box retailers. Walmart being the, the most important, Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, Rite Aid, CVS, et cetera. Uh, so the industry gravitated from being sell it on TV, make a buck, to drive some TV to offset costs and then mainly get it into the, the, uh, the big box retailers, which is where all the money's made today. Wow, that's a, that, and that's a huge difference. The, the technologies that you have seen you know, come and go through the years must be astonishing to you. I mean, like you said, you, you mentioned and some of, some of our listeners would never even dream of actually sending a check-in to buy something to now where you can instantly purchase something and almost have it the next, that day or this day. Um, you have seen so many changes. Well, I, I got to tell you, the, the, one of the biggest changes recently that's driving that, I wouldn't say it's the technology changes, though I'm more and more going to the web, but Amazon has really changed the the entire game because they've upped the they they they've upped the bar on everything. So uh, while that's a good thing, a lot of sales of as seen on TV products now that that we run and, and other marketers run <clears throat> does come in through Amazon. Uh, Amazon also can Amazon can make or break a product today because if you get a two rating or a one star rating on something. Uh, that's going to kill your product and the retailers won't take it. And if they have it, they may want to get out of it. So uh, you've got to, you've got to be in the mid threes plus to, to really uh, have a product work. Uh, so Amazon has that huge effect plus so much stuff being sold through Amazon, which kind of lowers our margins a little bit. Um, but they're a huge influencer, definitely a game changer for sure. Yeah, what a amazing, something that you wouldn't see coming a few years ago, really. I mean, you knew they would be big, but uh, to, to really change the industry, to have a company have that kind of effect is, is pretty phenomenal. It really is. Yeah, well, Jeff Bezos, uh, I think, is the richest man in the world now, or will be soon. Amazon was trading at, a, I looked at this morning, $1,012 a share, not bad. Thousand, it broke $1,000. That's amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I know my wife and I are buying stuff on Amazon all day. Why go, to, why go to the store? You know, we just, we just uh, open up the app or go online, but it sounds like I'm doing a little commercial for Amazon. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, they're incredible, but they, they've definitely changed. Not only as seen on TV, they've changed every industry that's yeah. touching. So I agree. And it's hard not to, it's hard to talk badly about them. They really are good at what they do. They're, they're, they're fabulous. No um, I yeah. have huge respect for Jeff Bezos, brilliant guy. And, uh, I'm glad to be able to ride on his coattails a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Now, um, just kind of switching, switching gears a little bit. Um, a lot of products that come into my facility, um, I know that you see hundreds of products. Um, what are you looking for? Like, like, like when somebody comes to you, and I'm sure you hear it all, the products that you're looking for as seen on TV, are there certain characteristics that you look for right away? That's for sure. The the it's really two sets of rules that I have kind of just internalized in my mind. So I can I can look through huge quantities of products. Sometimes I'll just get on Amazon or Alibaba and and just start scanning through it. I can look at thousands of products a day, and maybe find one or two that that meet the criteria. What I'm looking for, the most important thing, and when I talk to an inventor or an inventor 
wants to submit a product to me, uh, particularly a lot of them are rightfully paranoid about sharing stuff with people they don't know. Uh, nobody really knows, you know, who's who out there. Um, the, the, the first thing I say is, or I want to know is what problem does the product solve? <clears throat> it's got a, the whole thing about as seen on TV and for any product, you want it to solve a problem. You're going to buy a product to solve a problem. But the, for as seen on TV, it's got to be stronger in that area to get somebody to uh, get the impulse to go online in order or to make the phone call in order. And that's, it's about 60, 70% web orders now and, and the balance phone orders and maybe 2% those mail orders that still come in and money orders, believe it or not. But the, the, uh, the first thing I want to know is what problem does it solve? And um, the, next, the, the next thing I want to know about is uh, what will it sell for? Because the short form as seen on TV tends to be in under $100 market, under, mainly under 50 mainly really nine, $10, $20, $29.99. That's the, though there are some products breaking the rules on that recently. So I, I want to know what, what it will sell for. And, um, but the, the problem is really the main thing. If you, if it's a problem that resonates with me, cause I get to see a lot of problem solution, then I, I want to kind of figure out how, how unique is it? It doesn't have to be like, no one's ever thought of it or done it before. You may even be able to go to, to Amazon and look up things about that category and see if people are buying products like that. Um, but the, the, the problem that it solves, it's, if it resonates with me and I go, wow, I, I'd like that. You know, or I'll ask my wife or ask a friend. That's that's the number one. What problem does it solve? And then can it can it solve a problem at a at a reasonable cost? Uh, and are there a lot of easy substitutes for it? So those are the those are the initial things I look for. Yeah, those and those are big pieces. I know that you you know price. I'm sure is a big thing, but the problem is is very important. And and you probably hear this a lot. And you know when a when a when a potential client brings a product to you. Um, they, you ask them, you know, who's it for? They tell you that it's for everyone in the world. Um, do you find yourself having to figure out who that target market is for, or does a, does the inventor agree with you or is there a quick way for you to figure out who, who that market is? You know, I'm, I'm looking for mass market stuff. The advertising TV advertising is extremely expensive and uh, there's been fewer and fewer people watching TV and, but the costs haven't gone down. In fact, in a lot of cases, the costs have gone up in buying commercials. The, um, and even though there's so many more stations, the, the, uh, you've got to be able to cross that threshold of um, achieving an, an effective result when you do put it on TV. So the size of market is extremely important. We're looking for things like all men, all women, all seniors, uh, all dog owners, all cat owners. Um, but yet you'll still, you'll find some products out there, particularly if you're watching, you know, the late night TV, you'll find people or commercials about catheters and things like that. Now that's an important uh, item for the person that, that's buying those. And it's also a, uh, a market where they'll continue to buy over and over. So it improves the economics. Mm -hmm. and that's a relatively small market. I'm not sure how many people use catheters in, in, in the United States, but it's a relatively small compared to dog owners for sure. Uh, and dog owners that use catheters. I don't know what that market is. <laughs> is there, is there a category that stands out in your mind? Or as you said, you know, uh, it's just gotta be a mass. The, the categories that tend to do well, the, the, the products that did well in the early eighties kind of pioneered by people like Ron Popeil, um, our total marketing genius, um, uh, things like the slicers and dicers, um, uh, very good stuff. The choppers is Vegematic, uh, some, some hair products, uh, household products, kitchen gadgets, uh, storage gadgets. Um, it's, it's pretty eclectic lawn and garden. I mean, there, there's categories. In, in fact, there's a great website out there as seen on tv.com, not con to be confused with our company as seen on TV wholesale, but as seen on tv.com, they're kind of a catalog of everything that's that's out there and has been out there for many years. And a, an inventor could kind of go through that, that, look at their categories and buzz through and see the types of things that are there. That's, that's really a good reference for the types of things that are interesting. But some of the things we take on, like one of our, one of our biggest products for our company was a product called Wonder Wallet. 
and basically not not too many wallets. There's been a couple of wallets that have sold on TV, Dura Wallet, and, um, the Aluma Wallet, the aluminum one. Ours was uh, brought to us by an inventor we met on LinkedIn, uh, and um, great guy, and the the uh, he invented and patented. In fact, when he opens up the wallet, instead of the cards being this one horizontal, they're, they're vertical. So he's able to lay out more and have the wallet be thinner. Wow. So, and he got a patent on the way that lays out and uh, sold, sold a lot of them, you know, well in excess of a million. So, so, uh, but that's, I wouldn't necessarily think about well, the wallet category, but it, the, re the reason people like that, men liked it because it took away this, the fat wallet. There's actually a medical condition called fat wallet syndrome that caused sciatic pain. And uh, a lot of guys have it, you know, it's like they go to their chiropractor, Say you know, uh, take the wallet out of your pocket and you know, give me a hundred bucks. You know? <laughs> so, the, the, and then women like it because when they when they open it up at the at the checkout counter, they can see all their cards. Everything's there in a, in a kind of a photo album view. So they love that. So, and it solved a problem that people didn't really think about too much. And there's other thin wallets out there, but for some reason, this one resonated. It was solved that problem for enough consumers to achieve the necessary result. When I say the necessary result, there's one really super important concept in, in the ASCII on TV. It's called CPO. <clears throat> it's initials for cost per order. And CPO is uh, if you buy $100 worth of television time and you get 10 orders, 10 into 100 is 10, it's a $10 CPO. If you get five orders, a $20 CPO. Two orders, a $50 CPO. And that CPO, cost per order, uh, is a very, very critical factor in terms of determining whether or not a TV campaign can roll out. In other words, where hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of media can, can be purchased effectively. Uh, so in order to get to retail, the, the end result of all this stuff is to get it into Walmart. So to get it into Walmart, you have to run a bunch of TV. So the Walmart, as seen you know, on TV buyer, will say, okay, you're gonna support this with TV, we'll take it into our store. Um, but in order to get there, you have to have a low enough CPO to make the program work. So all roads lead to, on one end, Walmart, the other end, getting a low enough CPO to work. And that whole uh, kind of infrastructure works together in, in unison. Um, most inventors are surprised to find out that products that are advertised on TV now, in the short form, can't really speak too much for the 30 minute time, but in the short form, almost all the products being advertised are losing money. They're being run TV on a loss. Um, and the purpose of the running the TV is to uh, support the retailer uh, in getting those products moving off the shelf uh, in as seen on TV, which is one of the most productive categories in, in retail is as seen on TV because we're driving people to it. Wow. I mean, the way you explain it, it sounds <clears throat> you're calm about it. You're easy. You're saying, talking about, oh, they're losing. But it's, it's, it seems like it's a science. I mean, the strategy that you're putting together, and it's all towards that end game. And, you know, it's just, it is to me, it sounds like, you know, it's like, a, it's like putting together a science. It's like a science. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's very cool the way you guys do that. Is what I love is about the, the way the commercial, <coughs> the way the commercials are run. Um, they're very creative. I like actually watching some of the two minute commercials because some of the products that make it sound like their products are so fun or that you know, they're being used so well. And the, the, a lot of the products are good, but the way that they're, the way that they're presented, it's like in a, you know, it makes you want to watch. You know, the, it, it is very much a science. It's, it's definitely a very, uh, a process. The, the process is, is specific. Each company has its own process. We have our process. Other marketers out there have their process. Um, but there's, there's a, a method to it. You know, they almost all start up, you know, oh, no, is this, you're, do you have a belly like this? You know, now we've got, and it's in black and white, too, with the person's, you know, looking like <laughs> sad. And the music is, wah, wah. Uh, and then, uh, oh, not anymore, because now there's whatever, the electric belt that will, you know, make you... Uh, Make you, give you a six pack just sitting and drinking a beer, you know? So, uh, and then you go through features and benefits and try and show the extended uses of it and eventually build an offer that's, uh, that's stimulating to the public. Um, and everyone's always experimenting with, with what's what, especially with shipping lately because uh, Amazon and Prime uh, has really shaken up the whole shipping 
uh, aspect of products, which used to be a very big you know, source, important source of products to us. Kind of going back to the how Walmart's affected things, cut our profit margins because the consumer won't let us get away with charging them a lot of shipping now. Uh, they're 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 calling us on it and saying, mm, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna order if you're gonna try and do this now. So. Um, yeah, it all, it all works together, but it's a science. I was trained as a scientist. I was trained as a geologist, so a scientific method uh, is really what we're doing. You know, it's, it's yeah. a system, you know, and you got to put a lot through it because our experience is you got you to touch 50 potential products that look like they have potential to get one to work on TV. And we might have to, out of those 50, we might make five commercials. And out of those five commercials, one may get an acceptable CPO and make it through the, the you know, jump all the bars to get it into the, the Walmart and, and make some money. In. Wow. It uh, brings me to a quick question. So if you're testing, say, say 50 products, do you run small tests of the product? Um, like you make a commercial, I guess. Do you run tests somewhere? Um, you know, a, a compressed area to, to, to do some testing? You know, we, we do like surveys and we have this predict to hit process that we use. Um, where we can dip into databases of people that have purchased as seen on TV products from us in the past. Uh, and depending on the, the result of the profile from that, it, it gives us an idea as to whether or not there's, there's interest in it. Um, for every 10 products we send out, maybe one makes it through the process strong enough to uh, say, hey, we should make this a TV commercial. That's really where the investment starts when we start to get into the commercial aspect. I would um, imagine. Yes, yeah, so we want to we want to screen out as much as possible, and you never know which one. I mean, I'm always shocked. I'll I'll send out ten, and it's you know if, if I had to bet my life on it, you know, it's definitely Russian roulette uh, with nine bullets in the gun and one empty chamber. Uh, the chance you, know, you don't know which one's going to be empty. So we just keep testing and testing and testing and testing. It's a um, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's fun because we're always looking at a lot of products. Um, it's scary because you never know which one's going to work. And we have to talk to a lot of inventors and, and try a lot of things. And a lot of people kind of go away disappointed, uh, with our, with our system. We don't charge inventors anything. We're strictly, we pay all the expenses. We take on a hundred percent of the responsibility for everything from beginning to end. Cause we're not looking at we're not selling a service to them. Uh, not that it's anything wrong with that, but our, our model is just find the product and find the one in 50 that works and not try and make anything off inventors. And the, the inventors like that. It's a little scary to them because they get approached by a lot of people uh, that say, Hey, we're going to sell you this service or that service. So we're just, we're just trying to see if their product will fit our system uh, and then go from there. So. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons that I, th I thought, and then, wanted to get you on the show because I thought that your process could fit into a lot of people that are looking to get their product out there. Um, and I, and you know, the, the, the process of you guys taking on that risk is super important for a lot of the inventors. A lot of the inventors don't have those funds to move their product forward. What I like about what you guys do is there's very minimal risk and resources to be put in with the inventor. So it kind of opens them up to really go and work with you um, you, you were even saying earlier that even if they don't have, if they're not patented or even patent pending, you'll still look at the product and maybe be able to move it forward. Yes. Well, we'll even look, for, uh, I'll even look at and talk to someone who's, who's identified a problem. Um, because sometimes from the problem, then we can brainstorm together. How do we take it to the, uh, the next stage? How do we actually manifest it physically? Um, and, and the, and, and that's, we do a lot of our own inventing ourselves where uh, we've invented a, a product that it's going to be rolling out or soon it's a, uh, a nail clipper, special nail clipper and becoming older and fatter and less flexible. I found myself bending over to cut my nails, you know, and it's like dark down there and the shadow of my own body on it. And, I'm, <sighs> and, and, and so I, I thought it's got to be a better way to do this. And I, I found online a, a nail clipper that has kind of a rotating end on it, which was good. It was, it was, it was good but I still couldn't see it was dark so I thought okay you know I'm gonna put a light on this thing uh, and so we, we had a prototype built with a, a light at the end of it LED light and it, it rotates around with the with the uh, the angle of the clipper and uh, we call it wonder clipper it's gonna be rolling out got a patent on it uh, and and 
solving a problem for ourselves. So the problem was, you know, clipping your toenails when you're older and fatter. And there's a lot of older, fatter guys around mm -hmm. and women too, God bless them. And, and uh, everyone that looked at it that was in my demographic just went, that's like amazing, I want that, I need that. So uh, it's, it's really the problem and then we can go from problem to the next stage. Now in terms of royalty value and things like that, uh, a product that's just an idea is worth a lot less than a product that's prototyped, has inventory, sales history, etc. cetera. Um, but it's, it's proportional to, the, to what it is. And uh, we're connected with several thousand inventors on LinkedIn and I'm always challenging them, almost yelling at them to like, you know, like just keep inventing stuff, keep coming up with ideas, just send me the ideas. Well, you know, if there's something there, we'll work, work with you on it uh, and develop it. So everything from just an idea to something that's already proven and selling and, and going, we're interested in, in all of them. They have, and they have different values to it. So. No, that's great. And any of you listeners out there, um, you know, Bob Greenstone, look him up on LinkedIn if you're not connected to him. Um, you know, this he's telling you to submit your products to him. He is always, right, Bob? I mean, you're constantly looking for products. You're, there's never a lull, right? Every day when I'm eating my uh, Rice Krispies and my cup of coffee, I'm looking through, I'm thumbing through Amazon or Alibaba or looking at catalogs, looking for ideas, looking for problem solutions that nobody's really commercialized on TV. One, once, a night, once a problem has been solved on TV, chances are no other product will tend to work in that category for a few years if, it, if it's a pretty big product. So we're looking for products where the problem solution has not already been exploited. Once it's been exploited, you know, it can take years. You can bring things back after five to 10 years. Um, but generally, once that gap is filled, it's filled. So, uh, but there's a lot of problems out there. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. You know, I know somebody back in the old days in the patent office, they said, no, you know, you can close the patent office now because there's no new inventions. You know, it's like 150 years ago. It's amazing to me every day. But I, I can, in, in, in fairness to your listeners, a lot of them, seem to like to come up with new ways to poop or scoop. So no, no, no pooper scoopers. <laughs> and the, I've seen some wonderful solutions. They're incredible. No pooper scoopers. Another popular one that I get several weeks is how to keep a bag open, a trash bag. Um, but th there's some products that, you know, everybody seems to invent a pooper scooper. Uh, but, but, but beyond that, there's still like thousands and thousands of, uh, of problems to be solved. And it's got to be a, a, just a, and we don't know what it is. That's why we do these these little market tests. We don't know what percentage of the population is going to respond. Like on the wallet thing, we sent that out there, and a lot, a lot of people responded. The uh, you can send out something else that just seems like amazing. So everyone's going to want this, and you know it's crickets. So you know you don't get any response whatsoever. So we don't know. We, yeah, we just don't know. Well, I like that you're doing testing. Um, we get that question a lot here. When somebody brings us an idea, they ask us, you know, what do we think of the idea? And I say, whether I like this product or not, that doesn't mean that I'm the target market. I'm the niche. I'm the demographic. Um, and uh, that's why, you know, having somebody like you um, being able to test it or look at it. Now, I know you have a system that you run some of your products through. What's it called? It's called predict to hit Predict a hit and there's actually a website out there, predictahit.com, where we have some information about it. Uh, we used to sell it as a service to others, and we, we offered it. Initially, when we, we discovered it, we actually discovered the fact that uh, this email database that we had, if we sent offers to it, uh, it would tend to emulate how a product would do on TV. Wow. Um, so we, we kind of stumbled across that 10 years ago. And then, then we started to realize that uh, even if a product hadn't been on TV, if we, if we put a product through that system, that um, the, the, it would be, tend to be a predictor. Uh, and, and we predicted a lot of products, a lot of successful products that have been on TV in the last 10 years ran through that system. Since then, other companies have kind of replicated that in their own way for themselves. So, which is, uh, you know, a big compliment to us. It's become the industry standard for, for uh, identifying potential products. Not every company uses that. Some of them just go ahead. They like a product, they make the commercial and they put it on TV. Putting it on TV is the ultimate test. Um, but this definitely screens out a lot of products that just don't, they look, they're fool's gold. They, they look like they have potential, uh, but 
they just, they're just not going to sell. So we want to get those out of the way as fast as possible. And it, I got to say in 10 years of running tests, there hasn't been one product that we tested that failed our system that we screened out that then became successful on TV later with some other marketer. So, um, that's, uh, so it's it got a on my phone here, but, <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's that system. And, it, and it's really powerful. We don't, we don't offer it as a service to anyone anymore. Um, because, uh, we we're just kind of greedy and myself and I, I have a, a partner, a young, young fellow, half my age, Nate Paquette, who's not only my dear friend, but my, uh, my partner and he does most of the work. Um, so I can play with my grandkids mm -hmm. and, and we just have a system for taking these products, putting them through this kind of like a wood chipper. You ever see the wood chipper? You put the wood in one side and it comes out chips the other side. We, we run the wood chipper business and, uh, but it's with products. When something works, it's great. When it doesn't work, it's, you know, it's, it can be sad for the inventor, which is why we encourage inventors to really bring stuff to us at the earliest possible stage. Um, you know, if you feel compelled to, take your kid's college fund and your retirement fund and hawk your house. I've seen a lot of stories like that. And some of them do work out, but I've seen some that, you know, just putting them through our rule set and on our quick testing, I could have saved a lot of time, effort, energy, heartache, and, and money for, for the person. And, you know, we don't charge anything. So, uh, and some people, even when we test it, they charge on, they continue, you know, they believe in their product and, and that's good too. Some, there's some products out there that have become, um, having gone through that have gone through a system that that didn't pass, they became successful at retail. So uh, there's other ways to skin that cat. Yeah, well, that's why I'm actually glad you brought that up, and that's why I like what you're doing so well because it's good to have competition out there. There's no doubt about it. But what what I like what you're doing is you're segmenting. You're saying I am doing as seen on TV products. I'm not licensing the product. You know, uh, you know, there are people that want to license. There are people that want to manufacture and go to retail right away. So, so you're saying I'm looking at Asian on TV products, and I think that's great because if they if the product doesn't work well with you, you could you could probably still give them some knowledge, some experience on how to move it forward. You might say. I don't know how many you get. This is a great product, but it's just not good for as seen on TV. I mean, do you get that? Uh, most. I mean, I've, I've got to look at sometimes, I was mentioning that we, we test 10 to find one to make a TV commercial. To find those 10, I may look at 1,000. Wow. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a very broad funnel uh, and one little droplet out of the bottom. So the... Um, yeah, we, we look at a lot. We really don't know. People do ask us that. Uh, the, the bringing product to like a Walmart or a Bed Bath & Beyond, what's called in line, like if you have a plumbing product, you want it in the plumbing department, or you have a dog product, you want to bring it to the dog department, pet, pet department. Um, that's a whole different value chain, a whole different buyer. Walmart has the As Seen on TV buyer. That's, that, that's their As Seen on TV buyers. Most of the stores that are selling a lot of As Seen on TV have As Seen on TV buyers. And they're, they're a different cat than the person who's buying plumbing supplies or office supplies or whatever. So, and we're, we just, we're not familiar with those chains. So most of the time I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I just don't know. I'd like to, but I don't know the, I don't know the other parts of the chain yeah. and haven't really developed that expertise. So. No, no, no. Yeah, that's good. You want to be focused. I mean, you actually know what you, you know, this is what you do and you're really helping the inventor by doing just what you do. Cause you know, an inventor is always looking for that one, you know, bright word that you're giving them. So if you say, listen, this product is just not going to work. I wouldn't put any more money into it, but you might want to try Walmart. They're going to Walmart, you know? So, so it's kind of good that you stay focused on what you do. You do it well. Um, but like we said, I mean, just because it doesn't fit in what you're doing, it doesn't mean it's a bad product. It just means that you have to go talk to somebody, an expert in that side. Um, so that's what's good about it. Yeah. I mean, rarely will I tell an inventor, Ugh, yeah, please, yeah. You know, ah, forget it. You, know, you want to be kind, um, yeah. but, but honest. But I, I really don't know beyond asking you know, on TV. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm just ignorant of, of the other parts just because I haven't put my attention there. Sure. But as you know, TV, that's definitely an area where um, I have a lot of information, knowledge, and can screen things in or out. 
rather quickly. And there's, there's guys out there, you know, a thousand times more, more knowledgeable and successful than me that have had sold billions and billions of billions of dollars worth of product. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of guys out there that are, that are super sharp, great guys too, a lot yeah. of good companies. Well, you know, the, the asset on TV um, area is a good place to start if you have an idea. Um, whether it works or not in, in that, you know, segment is, is okay. But it's a good place to start because you can weed that out pretty quickly with not only your software, but your, your experience anyway. And at least they can get that out of their head or they can move forward because a lot of people are making a product going, I'm going to get this on an infomercial, you know, for five years, they're building it for that. And instead of, you know, wasting those five years, and I don't want to mean wasting, but instead of using that re- the resources to go towards that scene on TV, they could have spoken with you. And you would, you would say, hey, it, it, you know, you should try to go to retail or you should try to license it. So, I mean, if, if, if again, I can say is if somebody out there has an invention, has an idea, they haven't reached out to you, it's a, it's a good time to reach out to Bob and, and ask him about your product. Send it over to him. Yeah, I mean, we can give people very quick feedback. I'll put it through my you know, just mental, you know, uh, mental checklist of, of things. But like I said, one of the first things that I'll, I'll want to know is what problem does it solve? And if the problem sounds intriguing, you know, then we, then we can continue on down the road a little bit on that. Um, and, and sometimes I have to look at it to see what problem it solves. I don't understand. Sometimes the inventor doesn't quite under, can't articulate what it is. The, the, um, but it's, I, I think if somebody has a product and they're thinking about taking it to market and they think it has the potential for as seen on TV, it solves the problem and, and has good impulse value. It's worth getting professional information or opinion on, yeah, it does have potential. You know, we should, we should see it go down the road a little bit uh, or no, I don't think it really has any potential. Uh, and, and, you know, of course go talk to others as well. People in people in my business are pretty accessible because we're always looking for ideas, always looking for ideas. So um, I would encourage somebody, if they think their product has a potential for TV, check it out. Check it out. Um, We're happy to look at things. We give really, really quick turnaround. A lot of times, uh, you know, I think you and I contact first by email. I was back to you pretty fast because I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the email light to blink, you know, and (laughs) I used to like my Blackberry. Now it's an iPhone. But the the red light would blink, you know, and now the red light would blink. I'd jump on my my blackberry and, and say oh maybe it's a, a good invention sometimes it is oh yeah no doubt and like you said you you know you need to look at uh, at a lot of products you know to 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 get to that 10 or 50 then down to 10 and then to one or two and then to do some testing so to you it's it's kind of like an assembly line in a way not to give away from the ideas or the inventions but you need to move pretty quickly you know it took took uh i'm always encouraged by the fact uh, inspired by thomas edison took 10,000 tries, they say, to, to come up with a light bulb. You know, he was iterating the whole time, you know, to, to, to get there. But that, it's really a game of persistence, which is probably the key to success in anything in life. Uh, <laughs> persistence, sticking, sticking with something that's worth sticking with, you know. I totally agree. Hey, Bob, listen, man, we are, we're out of time. And I can't believe that we are already. Um, but what I would want you to do is um, we've spoken about LinkedIn, getting in touch with you. Um, how else or should should there be a different way for somebody to get in touch with you? You know, um, LinkedIn is great. Um, uh, my my email address, can I give that? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be bob at ASOTV, like as seen on TV, uh, W for wholesale.com. Bob at ASOTVW.com. Um, and I'm always watching for that red light to blink and I'm always checking my my LinkedIn account and, and, uh, or have them contact you and, and you contact me. So that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate it. And, and uh, for all you listeners, we'll have all of Bob's information, his contact information, as well as um, the video here and information on our, on our, fa- our uh, Facebook page and also on inventors Launchpad's uh, note page. So you can go and get it there. Uh, you can send us a question. We'll make sure we get it over to Bob also. And uh, Bob, listen, thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy. I wish we had some more time. I would love to invite you back on the show at some point, and hopefully we can get you uh, get some time blocked out to do that. I'd love to do it again. Have a great day, great week. God bless, and hi to everybody out there. Thanks, Bob. Take care, buddy.